to the last video in this mini series looking at how to use the human behaviour triad to get your employees to do what you want and again I just mean with work. So in video one we delved into personality and how that drives our thoughts, emotions and behaviours. Yesterday in video two I showed you just how what we think about ourselves, others and the world around us can trump our personality and change our behaviours even when our internal voice is shouting, just don't do it. Do you remember that chocolate analogy? Okay, so if you haven't seen the digestive video one and two, press pause. Head back right now. You really need to know about all three together for everything to work. And I promise you they're in this order for a reason. Okay, so today we're going to be exploring self-monitoring behaviours. Now, again, this theory is quite straightforward to grasp from the title. It's simply how well we are aware of our behaviours and how easily we modify them to fit in. So we're not rejected by our peer group. But, like most scientific theory, it's not quite that simple when it's put into practice. There's more under the surface. Now, at its core, there are two types of self-monitors, high and low. Those who are high self-monitors place a massive amount of psychological meaning to what others think about them. So they have perfected the art of altering the way they behave to fit in with other people's accepted societal norms. Not fitting in and not being accepted is pretty much their worst nightmare. These types of people will do anything they need to to fit in. Now in order to do this, they are continually checking how they're being received and adjusting their behaviour accordingly. So someone who scores high on neuroticism but is also a high self-monitor may in fact be able to hide these neurotic traits from the outside world when they need to, leaving you completely oblivious to what's going on at their core. Now those who are low self-monitors place a really low amount of psychological meaning on other people's perceptions. This means they pretty much do not give a hoot what other people think of them. Their core beliefs and values drive the way they behave and no matter who they're in front of, nothing is going to change what they say or do. People who are low self-monitors are kind of like an open book. You can work out their personality traits, their core self-beliefs really easily because they just don't present a different version of themselves ever. Now, neither one of these is better than the other. It completely depends on what job the person is doing and what you're trying to get them to do in their role. It's super important to get a handle on this because not doing so could end up in a huge PR nightmare for you and for your organisation. Now remember back to video one and we were talking about an extrovert in a library. Well, let's just say he was there doing some research for your organisation. Okay, so I know that nowadays we all just jump onto the internet to find out what we need, but bear with me. So the extrovert is a high self-monitor, so he's super motivated to get everyone around him to accept him. And it's this which will drive him to sit down, grab the books he needs and conform to be quiet. But... If he's struggling with so low self-efficacy and low self-esteem, as we saw in yesterday's video about core self-beliefs, his ability to monitor and moderate his behaviour is going to be diminished, meaning he might struggle to stay quiet. Having the odd bit and giving off super weird vibes because of the disconnect. So let's rewind and replay this scenario. But instead of the extrovert in the library being a high self-monitor, they're a low self-monitor. They don't care what people think about them. Do you believe they are likely to sit there quietly, doing as they should, or are they gonna just behave as they want, annoying everybody else around them? Because being loud and gregarious is antisocial when it comes to being in a library. People may think that this person's rude, and because this person's an extrovert, everyone in the library knows which organisation they come from, their job title, and probably all of their social media handles. Again, if this person is struggling with their core self-beliefs, their personality is going to be even more intensive, causing you as an organisation even more bother. So, 
how do you actually use this to your advantage to get your employee to do what you want? Well, first you need to work out whether they seem to change the way they're behaving when they're in different situations. Have you ever had a conversation about someone with another person and thought they must be talking about different Joe Bloggs because the one you know would never skydive, never bungee jump and never ever swim with sharks? Or are they the type of person who is always trying to convince everyone else about what they believe is right about everything? Do they behave exactly the same regardless of where they are, who they're with and even who they're talking to? Do you always have to apologise for something they said or something they did because they didn't grasp it was inappropriate? Now, don't worry, these questions and the two descriptions of the self-monitoring behaviours are included in your free checklist, which, like all the other freebies, you can grab from under the video. So, if we put everything together, essentially, our personalities, our core self-beliefs and our self-monitoring behaviours all interlink to determine how much we love our job and how invested we are in our organisation. If all of these are out of sync with what you need them to do, no amount of cajoling, bribery or threatening will get them to do anything you want or need them to do. But if you know all this about your employees and can make sure that their role and their tasks within their role are aligned with who they are at their core, they will do everything and anything you need them to do. Now, I know what you're thinking, I always do stuff I hate because it's part of my job. Or it's wrapped up in that lovely bonus I get at the end of the quarter if I just do what I have to. I'm going to level with you. Incentives can get people to do things they particularly don't like. However, in the long term, it really just doesn't work. The research just proves it just doesn't work. If you're continually using external reward systems to get someone to do what they're supposed to be doing as part of their role, is that really cost effective for the organisation anyway? Aren't you essentially paying them to do a job and then paying them a bonus when they achieve the job? Um, plus, after a while, people just don't care enough to do it. And often instead, find another job where they don't have to continually doing stuff they just don't like. Staying in a role in which you are only motivated to achieve because you're being pushed means that deep down, you really don't want to do it. If you're doing something you don't like for a long time, you will start to resent it. If you ignore all of your body's warning signs and still plow on doing the very thing you hate, eventually your body and your mind will just give up and boom, you're off sick. Now, stress has been linked with some super serious physical and mental health complications. I'm talking about cancer, heart disease and depression. These things literally kill people. Going to work every day, doing something you hate, can quite literally put your six foot under. Now the same is exactly true for your employees and this is why as a manager, you have to know them inside out. You have to be able to understand their core self so you can ensure what you're doing and what they believe really marries up. So what you want to do now is put all of this information into practice, get all your worksheets out and just start using them. And if you're open to learning how to be more effective at using the human behaviour triad to bring people back into the fold quickly and easily, because I'm sure they didn't always hate their job, click the link on the right and grab your spot on our 007 Masterclass. Now the 007 Masterclass and 007 Method is the quickest and easiest way to reduce employee absence without having any awkward conversations with your team or sucking up any more time in your already hectic day. You get full access to an exclusive Facebook group where my team and I will be on hand to help you through implementation and to act as your guide if things go wrong. You'll have access to more tip sheets and cheat sheets as well as a specialist absence monitoring checker and calculator. And for the first 15 who jump on board, you also get swipeable tests and quizzes, 
which are going to help you work out their human behaviour without having to do any of the hard work.